You've tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved in helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And in today's show, this is part one of a past webinar we did with the folks at Neighborhood Cats called The Drop Trap, a trapper's best friend. The webinar will cover everything from basic setup and deployment to advanced techniques for effective trapping. The presentation will also include tips on how to use a drop trap safely and effectively, as well as how to troubleshoot common problems that trappers may encounter. The session has something for everyone, from beginner-friendly advice to expert-level tips. Anyone with an interest in helping outdoor cats is encouraged to tune in. There's no experience required for this podcast. I hope you'll enjoy the show, and we'll see you next time for part two. So we have here Susie Richmond is the executive director of Neighborhood Cats, and she joined the organization after over 20 years running a major New York City shelter and nonprofit veterinary clinic. At Neighborhood Cats, she's led multiple large targeted TNR projects in New York City and northern New Jersey, managed a program for providing scholarships to veterinarians for training in high volume spay neuter of community cats and co-authored the Humane Society of the United States online course on TNR. In her spare time, she can often be found trapping feral cats on Maui. And then there's Brian Cordes, who is the co-founder and national programs director for Neighborhood Cats, a leading community cat advocacy group with hands-on programs in New York City, New Jersey, and Maui. Currently, he and his wife, Susie Richmond, live in Hawaii and can usually be found trapping cats or releasing them after they've been neutered. In between stints with Neighborhood Cats, he served as a grants manager for PetSmart Charities, overseeing over $21 million in TNR and spay-neuter projects. He has produced many of the leading educational materials on trap new to return, including award-winning books and videos, has assisted numerous communities in setting up large-scale TNR programs, and is a frequent presenter on community cat issues. Brian has a Bachelor of Arts degree from Cornell University and a JD from the University of California, Berkeley. I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate that. And thank you, everybody, for taking time out to learn more about drop traps. We do a lot of presentations with the Community Cats podcast, and this one is definitely one of my favorites, and you'll find out why. It's such a great piece of equipment. All right, let's get started. And first question is, you know, what is a drop trap? And it's just that old thing you've probably seen in cartoons where somebody props a box up on a stick with a string tied around it, and when the animal they want, in this case a cat, goes under it, you yank the string, the stick goes out, the box falls down, and boom, that's essentially it. Now, now obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the basic essence of it. It's really very simple in concept. This is an actual drop trap. Again, it's manufactured by Tomahawk Live Trap. You may find some knockoffs on the market, but I would recommend sticking to this manufacturer because uh, you're going to get a higher quality, better made piece of equipment. And it has three elements that I want to point out now. There's the side door, and that's after the trap falls down on top of the cat. It's how you get the cat out. You transfer through that side door into a normal box trap that has a sliding rear door. There's the anchor flap. You put a, something heavy on top of that so that the trap doesn't get pulled away after the cat's caught in there. And then the prop stick is what obviously lifts the trap up and what you tie your string to. And this particular model, you can see, folds up nicely and makes it much easier to transport. The particular model we like, the DT1, is 36 inches uh, square with 14 inches in height. Now, because people in the know, if you go to Tomahawk's website, livetrap.com, you'll see that there are two models of drop traps available. There's the one I just talked about, the DT1, and then there's a larger one that is 48 inches square, four feet square, instead of 36. And... I just want to emphasize at the start that today's presentation is based on the DT1, and we don't really recommend the larger one due to its weight. The theory is that it's a bigger space, so it's going to be a little easier to catch somebody. They'll have to run a little bit further before they can get out. And that theory is good. The problem is that the increased weight of the trap makes it considerably more dangerous. It builds up a lot more force, and if it hits a cat on the way down, the potential for injury is higher. So unless you're a really experienced 
we recommend you don't start with the four foot DT2 and stick with the DT1. In fact, we've drop trapped hundreds, Susie and I, hundreds and hundreds of cats and all with the uh, smaller one, the DT1. So you can build your own drop trap for those of you who are handy. And here's a couple of links to do that. There's a foldable version that you can make out of PVC pipe. And then there's a, a wood version and the plants, uh, this link are the drop traps, not foldable. So you, you've got a three foot square piece of equipment that doesn't collapse. Now, if you're a little handy, you can make the wood version collapse. Um, I built this one, as you can tell, I'm not really skilled carpenter. So it looks a little rickety, but uh, it worked and it was able to fold. The problem with do-it-yourself ones, these days, I don't know that you would save very much money off of the commercially available version from Tomahawk, but the main thing is that it's really impossible to clean. So the metal one, you can easily sterilize, you know, spray it with bleach or rescue, and then that's it. it it's sterilized. When you've got netting and wood and all sorts of grooves and things like that, you're not able to really keep it clean. But again, if you're handy and, and want to give it a shot, there are plans for it. Okay, so why a drop trap versus what we call a box trap? And the box trap, it's just your normal trap that we use for TNR most of the time. And it's because of cat psychology. When you want a cat to go into a box trap, you are asking them to go get bait at the end of a long, narrow, confined space. And cats have a natural wariness of doing that. And that's why we have to get them hungrier than they normally are in order to kind of coax them to go in. I mean, some cats will just go in no matter what, but most cats, if they're not real hungry, they're not going to overcome their fear and go into a, a box trap. But with a drop trap, they're not going into a trap, they're going under it. And that's a whole different thing with cat psychology. And most cats have no fear or very little wariness of going under as opposed to in. So as a result, they don't need to be as hungry. You don't necessarily have to withhold food. I mean, it helps if you withhold food the day before, but if you can't, that's okay. As long as they haven't eaten that day, they're most likely going to uh, come in. You might use them like if you can't identify the feeders, so you can't control the food source. It really is. That's why it's such an effective piece of equipment is most cats, uh, when they see the bait, they're going to just march right under the drop trap. Some of the uses, and there's a lot of them, and those of you in the 50 plus category and even in the 11 to 50 are probably going to be able to add on to this, but these are the basic uses that we have. So what we call targeted trapping, that's when there's a particular cat in among a group that you want to trap and you want to pick them out. So we also call selective trapping. So it might be a pregnant cat that just showed up. It might be a mom and her kittens. Maybe there's an injured cat. Maybe you've caught everybody in the colony except one or two. So you just want to pick them out. They might have a newcomer. That's a, a frequent use for us at neighborhood cats for the drop trap. Cats that just won't go into a box trap, no matter how much money you spend on bait or how long you try. But we also, and it's something we'll go over in detail, we often use drop traps at the start of what we call a mass trapping. And a mass trapping is when you're trying to catch all the cats in a colony at the same time. So if they do what we call cluster feeding, meaning they all gather around the same bowl, potentially you can start your mass trapping by catching, um, well, we've, we've caught, I think our record is 13 cats at once using three drop traps at the beginning of a trapping. You can also use the drop trap at the end of a mass trapping. And that's probably for us a more frequent use. Uh, we just had a trapping the other day. It was a, a 10 cats that we trapped and we put out our box traps and, you know, did all our usual tricks and caught nine of them. But there was one, uh, maybe five month old kit who was just really high strung and just would not go into a normal trap, just kept running up to it, running away from it. So rather than make him hungrier and try to come back the next day, we just set up a drop trap at the end of the trapping and he went right under and we caught him within a few minutes. Some trappers love the drop trap so much that they actually don't use box traps except for transferring cats out of the drop trap, but their, their normal way of trapping is with a drop trap. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on how to uh, physically assemble the drop trap because there's a great video by Tomahawk that goes through it step by step. And there's the link 
make sure to watch that. Also, the Tomahawk handout goes over it. But let me tell you, after you've done it a couple of times, you know, it takes two to three minutes and some people are even faster. It's a very simple design. Again, when you first do it, it may seem like there's a lot of moving parts, but after you've done it once or twice, you'll be adept. So check out this video for the actual unfolding of the trap and putting it together. So to start off, we're going to go through each step. What I want to emphasize at the start, though, is that you want to practice doing this. You don't want to go out for the very first time, uh, never having used a drop trap and try to catch that mama cat that you've been after for five years. It looks very simple, but the first time you use it, it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, it's easy to pull the string too soon. Where people who have no experience will make the most mistakes is during the transfer of the cat from the drop trap into the box trap. Now, again, it's not complicated. And if you do it once or twice, practice on a cat that maybe you want to update their vaccinations or even practice on your pet cat at home and make sure you give them a real nice treat when they're done. But go through dropping the trap, transferring the cat into another trap. And if you do that once or twice, you're good to go. But really, please take my advice on this. Do not use it on that cat that you bought the trap for and make that the first time you've ever done it. Looking for the perfect way to unwind and connect with some pretty cool cats? Look no further than the Meow Lounge in Westbrook, Maine. The Meow Lounge is your one-stop destination for feline fun and so much more. Step into their cat cafe where you can hang out with a dozen or so adorable, adoptable cats from local rescues just waiting for your love and affection. The Meow Lounge also has games, puzzles, a free library, even a gift shop featuring locally crafted cat-themed items. The Meow Lounge also hosts a wide array of events for you to enjoy. Whether it's yoga, trivia, movie nights, belly dance classes, arts and crafts, or Pilates, they've got it all. So what are you waiting for? Reserve your spot at the Meow Lounge today to experience the magic. Discounted rates are available for students, nonprofits, nursing homes, and community organizations. For reservations and information on upcoming events, visit www.meowcatlounge.com or call 207-358-0003. Are you ready to take your learning to the next level? Get your hands on the only all-access pass to all things Community Cats. The Community Cats Pass with Community Cats Podcast. This one-time purchase will ensure you're registered for all of our full 2024 calendar. That's all events, webinars, and workshops. From the online cat conference to the online kitten conference, from TNR to surrender prevention certification workshops, your 2024 Community Cats Pass will ensure you never miss a minute of cat-saving content. Turn your passion for cats into action all year long. Grab your pass today at communitycatspodcast.com. In animal welfare, there's always someone to talk with and learn from. Check in with hundreds of animal welfare colleagues every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern to have your chance at $5,000 just for attending. These 50-minute calls are a collaborative space to share exciting new programs and research, discuss uncomfortable topics, connect with peers in the industry, and more, all while sharing a common goal of preserving the human-animal bond. Go to forum.maddiesfund.org to register now. You can also watch on demand if you can't make it live. So preparations. You want to have a feeding pattern, ideally. So like with that kitty that we just saw the video of, his name is Wonka. That colony is on a feeding pattern and they get fed at dusk every day. So we knew exactly when he was going to show up. So that's real important that the cats in general be on some type of predictable pattern that allows you to show up half an hour before, set everything up, and then you just sit there and wait for them to come. If you can withhold food for 24 hours, that's great. Like I said, you can get away with it if they just haven't eaten that day. But there still are cats who will be a little bit wary and just helps if they're hungry. So if you can withhold food, you know, you feed them on Friday morning, you drop trap on Saturday morning, just make sure when you feed them on Friday morning, you take the food away by late morning and they'll have gone about a day without eating. So they're, they're not ravenous, but they're kind of their normal hungry scout the location. You want to have good visibility. So you have to trigger the trap. It's a manual 
thing it doesn't go off automatically. So you need to be able to see the trap and the inside of it really well, especially the uh, food bowl. You want a flat surface. We'll talk about how you can drop trap on an uneven surface later, but normally you want to make sure the trap is going to land and there's not going to be any openings uh, in the ground beneath it. Keep in mind that you're going to be transferring the cat out. So ideally you have enough space to put the regular trap. Now it is possible once you've got a cat in the drop trap to slowly rotate it and make room for your box trap. But again, ideally you would set it up in a way where you wouldn't have to do that if you have a choice. And again, we talked about don't put the trap so it lands close to an edge of something that the cats can just push the trap over and get out from under. Here's an equipment list for you guys. Again, just download these slides and you can print this out, have it as, as kind of a, a, a checklist. Everything is pretty self-explanatory. It's very helpful to have a second person, especially if you're starting with this, can do it alone. But again, having that second person can make a lot of tasks a lot easier. And I want to mention one thing, which uh, we get a lot of great tips from people who watch the webinars. And one came from uh, Helen Woods of Laurel Cats. She wrote that it's real important what kind of rope you use to tie to the prop stick. And her experience has found that what's called braided nylon, B-R-A-I-D-E-D, stretches a lot less than twisted nylon. And she said Dacron, D-A-C-R-O-N, is the least stretchy option. So that's braided Dacron, and you can pick that up from Amazon. And the reason that's important is the further away you go from the drop trap, if the rope has stretch within it, that stretch is going to get more and more exaggerated the farther and farther away you go. And it's going to make it a little bit harder to judge how hard you have to pull to pull the strip, you know, get this prop stick to drop. If you have a rope like a braided nylon where it's very taut and has very little stretch, then you just have to yank your wrist and the drop trap will fall. So think about what kind of rope you're using. Okay, baiting the trap. If you're doing a targeted trapping, like you may have noticed with trapping Wonka, how much bait you, you may have reasonably thought that was a ridiculous amount of bait to put in a drop trap. And the reason for that is because it's a large colony. It's about 20 cats. And there are some of them that usually have learned that they can go into the drop trap with no consequence and have a great meal. It may be that you're 10 or 11 cats into this colony before the one you want comes along to take a bite. And what you don't want to have to do in the middle of this is go and refill the bowl. So if you're doing a targeted trapping with a large colony of cats, you want to be really generous with the amount of bait that you put it there. And we'll talk about this more. You want to use a familiar bowl or dish. It should be non-breakable. There are two ways you can go that are completely opposite when it comes to the kind of bait. So some trappers like us, like Susie and I, we like to put something that's extra enticing that the cats aren't used to, you know, like sardines or tuna, something something really smelly, roasted chicken. Other drop trappers prefer to just use the normal food that the cats are fed daily. And that, in a sense, makes it more normal for them. We've tried both and, and both can be successful. Just find out for yourself. You could start off with the cat's regular food. And if they're not going for it, then maybe add some tuna on top, something like that. You're going to put the bowl or the dish along the back end of the trap, and it's going to be centered. So that's real important where you place the bowl because you want to place it in a way, in a spot where when the cats are eating and the trap starts to drop, it's the furthest distance that they would have to run in order to get out. So obviously, if you put the bowl in the middle of the drop trap, the distance to get out of it is going to be half as much. And lightly sprinkle, and I want to emphasize the word lightly, a bit of bait around the edges of the drop trap and leading towards the bowl in the back. And that's just a kind of Hansel and Gretel thing where you're trying to lead them in. Don't put a lot because you'll get some cats who will just run in, grab the little bit of trail, and then run back out and fill themselves up if you put too much out there. So just very lightly sprinkle some bait. Now, just before you know, you get to the point where you're going to actually do the drop trapping, you need to take these steps, especially if you're alone. You want to think ahead 
and position your box trap that the cat's going to go into or transfer cage, whatever you're using, with a sheet and have it within arm's reach of the drop trap. So that way you run over, you cover the uh, drop trap with your blanket, and you can just reach over and get the trap that the cat's going to be transferred into and not have to go run back to the car or something like that. Move far enough away that the cats are comfortable. And that's going to depend on the cats and the circumstances of the trapping. So you could see with when we were trapping Wonka, we were very close because we could sit in a car and the cats didn't really perceive us as a threat as long as we were in the car. Now, if we didn't have that luxury and we had to stand outside or sit outside, we would have probably been at least 15 or 20 feet further away so that they would be totally comfortable and not consider us a, a threat in any way. Have the blanket by your side. As soon as you caught your kitty, you can run over. Hold the string taut. That's real important. Again, your ideal thing is you're going to want to just flick your wrist or just a very quick motion back with your arm. You don't want to have it to give it like this huge yank, which you might have to do if there's too much slack in the rope. So the worst thing that can happen when you're drop trapping is if you have too much slack and you give it a good yank and the thing doesn't budge. Uh, because the cat will notice that you did something and probably dash out. Now, if the trap doesn't actually drop and you're patient, then the cat will come back and not to worry. But if it does, if you yank it, the cat gets out and you, you kind of continue your motion, the drop trap falls down, well, you may not see him again that day. When we get into the actual trapping, in this slide, the cat we're after is the black and white cat. The cat that's in the drop trap's already ear-tipped, you may have noticed. Now, this is a very good scenario because it's great to have the cat you're after see another cat go in, have a bite to eat, and then leave so nothing happens, nothing dramatic. That can help persuade them that it's just fine to go in and nothing, nothing to worry about here. And again, this is why you want a lot of bait. So after the cat you're not after leaves and the cat, your target cat goes in, Judging when you pull the string is, is super important. You want your target cat to be fully engaged in eating and absorbed in that and not tense and not ready to spring. So now if the cat is still a bit tense, still looking at it, not quite there yet, tail maybe not all the way under, if you pull the string now, it's amazing how quick these guys can move. And if they're not absorbed in the food, they can, even though it takes a split second for the trap to drop, they can get out. So you have to be patient. Now our cat is fully absorbed in the food and eating and is not paying attention to the trap anymore. So this is the perfect time to go ahead and yank the string. It's better to misjudge on the side of not pulling the string than of pulling the string too soon. Because if you don't hold the string, there is a chance that the cat will not get fully engaged and it's going to back out. It happens all the time. It doesn't happen the most. Usually when they're in this position, they continue on to eating. Once in a while, you'll get a cat who will sniff at it and then back out and you'll be feeling like, ah, that was my chance. You'll get another chance if you don't pull the string. If you pull the string too soon and the cat gets out, it's going to be tough to drop trap her again, at least any time in the near future. But if you don't pull the string and she backs out, there's a very good chance she'll come back later and not even that much later. So be patient, wait until the cat is fully absorbed. At that point, you can pull the string and cover the trap quickly. And that's real important. It's just like a regular box trap where covering them calms them down. If there's more than one cat in the trap, You'll need to not only cover the trap, but put some type of weight on top of it, like your foot or a heavy object. And the reason for that is, except for rare instances, one cat cannot lift the trap up and scoot out from under it at the same time, unless you're on an uneven surface of some kind and the trap lands in an awkward position that creates an opening. But if you're on a flat surface, it's just not physically possible for a cat to go up and out at the same time. But if you have two cats, it is possible. One of them may jump up, lift the trap just even a couple of inches while the other one kind of 
gets their legs out or head out and that it's able to squeeze through. So if you've got two cats, keep that in mind that you want to get over there quickly and weigh the trap down. This is where it's real helpful to have more than one person because somebody can just stand there with their foot on top of the uh, trap. Now you're going to do the transfer once everybody's covered up and calm. What you're going to do is line up the rear door of your box trap, not the front, the rear door that slides up and down with the side door of the drop trap. And just a tip, make sure that the front door of the box trap is shut. This is especially important if you're thinking like, well, I've got the box trap here. I might as well set that too, right? Because maybe Kitty will go into the regular trap before she goes into the drop trap. The problem with that, I recommend you don't do that, having made that mistake myself, because in the heat of the action, when it's a little chaotic, the cats are jumping around and you're trying to cover it, and you want to get them out into the regular trap, you may forget that you set the trap and that the front door is open. Try to get into the habit of always checking. But I did that once, and, and it was a really tough one because it was a cat that was extremely difficult to catch. I was literally about 50 yards away in my car pulling the string, and I had to drive up. It was that far away, and I had done that. I had set the box trap up and had the front door open, and I forgot. And you can imagine my shock when I did the transfer, and the cat went running off into the distance. So don't make that mistake. It's better your transfer trap is don't set it, but if you do remember my experience and don't let that happen to you. So now you'll find there are spring clips that it, their normal function is to attach the roof of the box trap onto the main frame. But there's a couple of extra spring clips by the side door, which you can use to attach the trap that you're transferring into. This is real important. This, this was something that was added after the drop trap first came out. And the reason for that is the danger in a transfer is if one of the traps shifts and there's even a couple of inches of an opening, you'd be amazed how the cats can squeeze through that. So if you just take the 10 seconds to attach the spring clips to the box trap, it will prevent that kind of shift from happening and you'll be safe. This is the number one way that cats escape drop traps is during the transfer when there's a shift and all of a sudden there's an opening between the two doors. So if you just use these clips, you won't have that happen. Now that you've attached your box trap to the drop trap, you can go through the steps. And the idea is Kitty wants to get out, right? And you need to create the illusion that there's a way out. And the way you do that is you cover the trap you're transferring into with a sheet. You would cover the front more, but we want to, you know, for illustrative purposes, uncover just near, near the connection of the two doors. But the idea is everything's covered except for the rear, which is now the front door of your box trap. So when Kitty is looking for a way out, they're going to see literally light at the end of the tunnel. And that's instinctively where they're going to run. So nine out of 10 times, once you do this, the cat will run out of the drop trap if it's completely covered into the box trap, trying to get out the other side. Once you've got everything in place, you, you're going to raise the two rear doors and try to stay out of the cat's line of sight. You don't want them to realize that on the way out, they may be running towards you. So it's real important to keep on either side of the drop trap side door, keep that covered and basically try not to let the cat see you uh, standing there. Once you've got the cat in your box trap, the first thing you do is shut the doors. The box trap door is uh, real important. If you can't do both at the same time, close the box trap door and lock it. But keep in mind, if you've got more than one cat in the drop trap, don't forget to shut that side door also. That's a mistake that can be made where you pull away the box trap and the side door of the drop traps open and guess what? Kitties are, are going to run through. If you get into the habit, just always shut both doors, whether there's one cat or 10 cats, always shut both doors and you won't have that problem. Take the spring clips off, fully cover the box trap. If there is more than one cat in the drop trap, you're going to just repeat the transfer process one cat at a time. Now, I don't know if it's on our equipment list. It should be bring a trap divider with you because if you have two cats go into the box trap at the same time, you can just use a trap divider to separate them, you know, and then transfer them in your holding space or something like that. What if your cat won't go in? Now, again, nine out of 10 times, 
what I just described is going to work. The cat's going to run into the side, but uh, one out of 10 times, they're, they're not going to. So what do you do? Or maybe you don't, you know, want to wait for 10 minutes, <laughs> you know? Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can slowly pull the blanket or sheet that's covering the drop trap, pull it towards you. You're standing at the box trap and at the side door because feral cats, if the cat is feral, they feel calmer when they're covered. So they tend to move from uh, light to dark. So if they're captured and they're exposed to the light, their natural instinct will be to move to where they can be covered. So if you start to pull the cover of the drop trap towards the box trap, most of the time they will naturally move in that direction and then they'll see the light at the end of the tunnel and go running in. If you have a second person, they can bend down and just decide the drop trap opposite the door. They just bend down, don't, don't stick your fingers in, just stay a safe distance away. But if you bend down and look at the cat, a lot of times they're just going to get scared of you and go running in the opposite direction. Using a spray bottle, just a little squirt of water, nothing much. You know, cats hate water, so they tend to run away from that. Our least favorite thing to do, but if you're really stuck, you could try is to slowly move an object like a stick or a broomstick. You're not looking to touch the cat. That's real important. You're just looking to, you know, scare them in that other direction. So if you start to move an object towards them, their instinct will be to run away. There's also something called drop trap dividers, which I'll show you in a moment that you could use. And if worse comes to worse, just wait. Sooner or later, uh, usually sooner, they're going to make a move into the transfer cage. These are drop trap dividers. A normal trap divider would fit into a box trap. These are designed for a drop trap, and you can get them at Tomahawk Live Trap. It's the model uh, DTTDs for drop trap trap divider. And you can see how you can section the drop trap off, make it smaller, and start working the cat towards where you want him to go through the side. Really helpful to have a second person if you're doing this. We always have a pair of these in the car, just in case. And most of the time, the cat's not like frantically running all over the place at this point because you tried the other things. They've probably calmed down a bit. And you're able to kind of move these one at a time forward and get the space the cat's in smaller and smaller. And eventually, they just like, a, I, I can't do worse by going through this uh, side door. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think. And a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening. And thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats.